One of the most powerful features in Unity is the ability to bake your lighting data into light maps. Bake lights at 4000 Kelvin for 30 minutes for a crisp surface and a juicy core. Hmm. Not only does this make your game a lot more performant, but it also makes the lighting much more detailed and realistic. And apparently, delicious. But of course, the problem with baked lighting is that not all objects in your scene are static. Sometimes you want objects such as your player to move around but still react to the different lighting conditions in your scene. Luckily, Unity has a solution for this. Light probes. With light probes, you can get all the benefits of baked lighting on the static objects while making sure that moving objects stay appropriately lit. In fact, when you create a new project, the Unity sample scene already has a bunch of light probes set up. So it's something I really recommend you use. And it's actually insanely easy to set up. But before I show you how to do exactly that, Unity is currently giving away free ebooks on improving your game development workflow. The ebook is called Nine Ways to Optimize Your Game Development, and it's filled to the brim with cool and very useful tips, tricks, and good practices to help you finish your game faster and avoid headaches along the way. Overall, I think it's a really cool checklist for people making a game. I've been using Unity for over 10 years now and I still found plenty of cool stuff in there on topics like physics, performance, UI and the list goes on. Again, it's completely free and I don't know how long this offer will be up, so make sure to get it while it's available by simply clicking the link in the description and filling out the form. It literally takes just 10 seconds. It's a really solid addition to your game dev library, so make sure to check it out, even just for later use. Now, before we start adding light probes to our scene, let's have a look at how they work. Well, when you bake your lighting, Unity does its best to simulate real light rays bouncing around the scene. It will then take this lighting data and turn it into large textures that are then overlaid on top of your objects. What light probes do is allow us to add certain points around our scene that will store the lighting information in that particular place. For example, if we add a light probe to a place in the shadow, the probe knows that at this point the lighting is darker. Or if we add a light probe close to a colored surface, the probe knows that at this point there is colored light bouncing off of that surface. Then when we add in a moving object, that object will automatically check what light probes are nearby and light itself based on the information in those probes. And not only that, it will also smoothly transition from one probe to another. Now, how do we go about doing this in Unity? Well, let's find out. So as you can see, I've set up this quick example scene in Unity. And all I have in here are two white cubes making up our walls. I have two cubes making up our floor. One is red and one is blue. And finally, I have this sphere here, which is going to represent our moving object. So you could imagine this being a player, for example. And of course, I have a directional light lighting the entire scene. So let's first of all get our scene ready for baking. To do that, we want to select all of the objects that are static in our scene and go to the top right corner of the inspector and mark them as static. I'm going to hit yes, change children to change all the selected objects. And right away, you will see that Unity starts baking a light map. I'm also going to go to our directional light here and mark that as static as well. And under the light settings here, there is a mode and I'm going to change that from real time to mixed because we want to use a mix between baked and real time lighting. This way, our light will bake in all of the lighting information on all of the static objects and still have our real-time objects cast shadows as you see here. If for some reason your scene isn't baking right or you just want to play around with some of the light mapping settings, you can always go Window, Rendering and open up the lighting settings. Here there are of course a bunch of settings for configuring your light mapper and at the bottom you can control whether or not you want to automatically generate light maps or do so manually. I'm just going to set those to Auto. Of course, to learn more about baking your lighting, check out our video on symbol lighting in Unity. There's a lot more info there. So now that our lighting is baked, we can see that we already have some more detailed lighting in here. We have some ambient occlusion and we even have some bounced lighting where you can see some of the color of nearby surfaces spilling onto the white walls here. However, this doesn't apply to our sphere. This is not marked as static and so when we start to move this around we can see that there's no bounce lighting being applied and if we move it into the shadow, well it stays completely lit. In other words, we need to add light probes to this scene. So to do that, let's go to our hierarchy, let's hit the plus sign, let's go under light and select light probe group. And right away you can see this adds a group of light probes into our scene. Let's move this up to make sure that all of our light probes are above our ground. And what we can now do is start to distribute these probes around our scene. 
So I'm going to hit edit light probes over here. And with that selected, we can now select each one of these light probes. We can also select multiple at once and actually start moving these around. So I'm going to start by placing a light probe in each corner of our scene here. There we go. And I'm going to take all of the top light probes and move them up to the top of our scene as well. So now we've created this big cube of light probes. However, this is currently not very detailed. What we really want to do is go ahead and add additional light probes to wherever there's a change in the conditions of our scene. A good example of this is this color change right here. Now this is going to influence the bounce lighting that is going to spill onto our sphere. So we probably want to add a light probe on either side of this change. So if we go from the right here, we will have some red light and that will slowly transition as we move to the left to blue light. So to do that, let's go ahead and simply select some of these light probes here. Let's hit Control D to duplicate and move them over. You can also use the buttons out here. And I'm going to put one to the left of this change. Hit Control D again and put one to the right of this change. Similarly, we want to do the same thing with shadows. So if we go over here, we can see there's a change between fully lit and shadow. So let's go in here and let's select all of these light probes here. Let's hit Control D. Let's move them over to one side of the shadow here and the other side of the shadow here. And for these here, we could actually go ahead and select only these light probes right here and we could move them over and maybe just take a couple of them here and move those over here just to kind of follow the direction of our shadow. So with that, we've actually gone ahead and covered most of the changes in lighting conditions throughout our scene. We can definitely go in and fine tune some of this. And one thing that you definitely want to be aware of is that you don't place any of these probes inside of all the objects that will definitely cause very weird behavior. So don't go inside of the cube because then it will be completely dark for these probes. Just leave them right outside of all of these things. And if we now stop editing these light probes, it should just work automatically. If we now select our sphere, because this is not marked as static, it's automatically going to show which light probes are nearby. And as we start moving it around, we can see it changing between the different light probes available. Really, really cool. In fact, we can see the lighting change on a sphere already. Right now, it's actually receiving some red bounce light from the surface. But as we go and move over here, we can see that bounce light changing to a more blue color. And if we move it into the shadow here, we can see transition to a much, much darker lighting condition because we're now inside of the shadow. Really cool. And all this again just happens automatically. In fact, something really cool that you might not have noticed is that each one of these probes here actually display the lighting conditions on a tiny sphere. So you can see what's going on with these probes inside of the editor. Take for example, these two right here. We can actually see the red light bouncing onto one of them and the blue light bouncing onto another. And all we're doing here is just moving from one of these probes to another. Really, really cool. And this should actually work right away in game as well. However, sometimes I've noticed that Unity light maps can be a bit weird when playing a scene, especially when transitioning from one scene to another. So if this is causing weird behavior for you or the light probes simply aren't working in game, I would recommend disabling auto generate and then manually generating the lighting by hitting this button. For me, this has always solved a bunch of issues. And if we now select our sphere, I've gone ahead and added a quick move script to it. So if we now hit play, we can see that the lighting here is indeed working inside of the game as well, just as intended. Awesome. And of course you can go completely nuts with this and add as many real time objects as you want. We could go in here and quickly create a cube as well. Let's move it up here and place it, let's say, here and let's just add a white material to it and right away you can see that this is also being influenced by all of our probes so it's that easy to now start adding new objects you only have to do this setup once Woohoo! and that's pretty much it for this video this is a really quick effect but it's just so incredibly useful and a lot of people get scared to use it because they see a bunch of light probes around the scene and think it's way more complicated than it really is so we thought we just had to make a video on it to show that it's really not that hard and if you enjoyed this video make sure to subscribe and ring that notification bell so you don't miss the next one also don't forget to check out the free ebook on improving your game development simply click the link in the description to get it on that thanks for watching and i will see you in the next video thanks to the awesome 
Patreon supporters who donated in November, and a special thanks to Infinity PPR, Dante Sam, Samuel, Lost to Violence, Love Forever, Chris, Face of Marify, Megan Frazier, Leo Lissette, Mia Mia Pop, Mohammed Yunis, Daniel Desanik, Jacob Sanford, Naoki Wasaki, Mark Antoine Girard, Gregory Pierce, The Mighty Seuss, Alison the Fierce, Yijit Kaya, and Erasmus. You guys rock!